Can't find no work, can't find no job, my friend. Money is tied up and it's ever been. Say, man, I just don't understand what's going on across this land. Oh, what's happening, brother? Yeah. What's happening? What's happening, my man? Welcome to The Advocator Show. My name is Charlie H. Fisher III, and I'll be the host for today's program. The Advocator Show is designed to bring awareness to the community about issues that affect society as a whole, as well as to highlight local businesses and talent coming in and out of the West New York area. Today's topic is disparities in the city of Buffalo, and yours truly, Charlie Fisher, I will be sharing with you. We'll be right back after this short break. They can change me. My heart needs to be clean. I will start composting. Throw the trash in this bin. Throw the trash in this bin that's past tense. Situations last less time, but hurt worse when you are screaming to be heard. People calling you crazy, label you lazy, and try to pump pills into your ills. Under the influence, I escape with people like me. No black Moses, we all neglected weeds. But I maintain, saying in my brain. But see, my pain was so packed up that my fruit tastes strange. I'm giving fruit by the foot. I roll out this red carpet, but my soil spoiled. So my gift is garbage, stuck, struck when I realized. When I realized I was wishing for a fan to see in my real life. I wanted a better future, but when it didn't come to past, I, I dwell on the past. The present isn't gift, it's just lack, no. Effort was put in me by my peeps, but their war on drugs left me leaning on me. Now, how do I compost the psycho in me when I don't even know who to be? Welcome back to The Advocator. My name is your friend Charlie H. Fisher III, and we're going to address a number of important subjects today. Certainly, we want to acknowledge The Advocator, uh, a uh, tremendous force in eight years now, and public access programming through the Apollo Telecommunications Center. We certainly appreciate uh, the staff and organization for a job well done. Friends, I want to talk to you today about disparities in the city of Buffalo. Buffalo, at this point in time today, at the time of this broadcast, has a $19.5 billion uh, windfall of development that's going on in the city of Buffalo. That's 19 and a half, almost $20 billion of development in the ground. That's construction going on in West New York. Construction like what? Construction like the Harbor Center, uh, where we have, uh, uh, you know, a tremendous development. Construction at the canal side. Construction at the, Erie, the Buffalo Medical Campus. Construction all over the place. So Buffalo, New York is blessed to have a great deal of development. Unfortunately, uh, there is not a fair and equitable uh, amount of work being shared. So you have a number of people who are, how can I put it, they are on the outside looking in. Unfortunately for this uh, time and place, Buffalo has not treated the citizens of Buffalo who happen to be black and brown, for that matter, red and yellow, uh, fairly. So all of this development going on, and yet what you see is mostly white men, and many don't even live in this area, and that's a shame. I want to talk about disparities in the city of Buffalo. Uh, I want you to know I'm serving as president of Build of Buffalo Incorporated, and as president we have long, since the 70s, been involved in the demand for fairness and justice for equity and equal opportunity in the building trades, the construction, in development, in business in general. Today you have 140,000 African Americans in Western New York in Buffalo vicinity. Um, and of that 140,000, you have many who have skilled trades, who've worked in construction. Sadly today, uh, many of them are not uh, able to participate, are not able to get work. Uh, there is a project labor agreement uh, for a project called Solar City. What's Solar City? Solar City is a development 
a actual plant that's being constructed in South Buffalo and the state of New York has decided to give seven hundred and fifty million dollars towards the building of this plant. Solar City is a plant that will develop and um, they will manufacture solar panels and it is the largest solar panel organization in the country. It's a Silicon Valley company. Now they're coming in to a plant that the state of New York is building and was on City of Buffalo land. The state acquired this land. In constructing Solar City, uh, the city of Buffalo gave the land to the state of New York. The state of New York has invested uh, money towards the building of this. In other words, we'll build a plant. We'll build a plant for you, the Solar City Company, to come in and we'll only charge you one dollar per year. I'm going to build you a nearly billion dollar plant and then I'm going to charge you one dollar a year and give you no taxes. I'm not going to charge you any taxes for 10 years. In return for that, you're going to hire 1,400 people in full-time jobs. That's Solar City. Uh, but we're going to get into it because right now, as Solar City is being built on state land uh, with state money, the construction of the, 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 the facility is not allowed and has not been fair to black people and brown people, particularly the black, the African and Latino community have not had their share of workers. When you go out there, as we have had, we've gone out there with a build organization with a number of community organizations. We have gone out there uh, at the call of yours truly and the Honorable Betty Jean Grant. And we led a protest saying, wait a minute, why don't we have more uh, black people and brown people, people who look like us at this work site? Why are we only seeing white men? And that protest had national uh, coverage, had national news. We protested this event. Uh, we protested the, uh, the unfair treatment. We brought out information that the state of New York has an executive order 15A for any of these kind of construction projects that calls for a 25% utilization of minority businesses and 5% women businesses, 25% minority workforce and 5% a women workforce. Someone in January or so decided that that wasn't going to be the case. Now, right now, there's an agreement between Simonelli Corporation, Simonelli Development, and the Project Labor Agreement, uh, Project Labor Unions, that there would not be a pro a, a strike. A PLA is a Project Labor Agreement that says we guarantee that you will not have a strike. You won't have any workforce interruptions. And this project labor agreement, somehow the goals were lowered. And this is what we brought attention to. Also, the fact that Simonelli, uh, the developer, uh, you know, has been named. And uh, I don't, we don't believe that it was a fair selection. More than that, the state of New York does not have a representative from its staff in Buffalo, New York, that is uh, monitoring the situation. So it's sort of like the fox in the hen house. And that's why right now uh, we don't feel it's a good situation. Not for our tax money, not when we spent this city, this state, $750 million. And all you have is basically white folk out there. That's unacceptable, white men in particular. And what's going to change that? Um, the governor's office. And that's why we're calling on the governor of New York State, uh, Andrew Cuomo, to uh, reissue the executive order uh, at 25 percent. Similarly, in New York City at the expansion and development of the LaGuardia Airport, the same, the goals were lowered there as well. So we want the governor to restore those goals. We want a compliance representative and we want the books open. When we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit more about opening those books, those windows and doors to government so that the people can really see uh, what we have. Now just hold that thought for a little bit. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to really talk about that. I know this is a little controversial, but you know, controversy is good. You cannot change the quality of our lives in Buffalo till you change the quality of our leadership. 
So we'll be right back. Just hold that thought, okay? Thank you very much. Uh, we have decided to visit Mayor Byron W. Brown. Uh, we had hoped to see him. Previous efforts uh, to meet with him have failed. Um, and at, after several demonstrations that we came, we never were fortunate enough to have a meeting with the mayor. But we're going to continue to try. Uh, we hope the mayor will see us because we're citizens and we have a right to see the chief executive. We call on the mayor to address the issue of the percentages and why he felt a project that right now only has 5% black and 1% Latino, Puerto Rican, why that would be a project that's in compliance. He gave the wrong signal, he had no business doing it, and we plan to speak to him about that. But regardless, this state-funded project for nearly a billion dollars for a $1 a year rental, we, we don't hit on Solar City, a 10-year free tax period. This is our money, the people's money, and we tend to see justice in building the facility, and after they build it and give it to them for one dollar a year, we expect the jobs. This is not a request, it's a demand and a command. Thank you. Welcome back to The Advocator. My name is Charlie H. Fish III, president of the BUILD organization, and we're talking about disparities in the city of Buffalo, and in particular at the Solar City development. We're all happy for growth an opportunity. We're glad that Buffalo's coming back. We're glad that Buffalo's no longer the rust city that everybody left after the closing of Bethlehem Steel. We're excited about, uh, on a Friday night, you go out on, if you drive down Chippewa, there are 100,000 people out on Chippewa, Pearl, Franklin, and uh, Elmwood and Delaware. It's exciting to see Buffalo on its way back. It's exciting to see over 363 events uh, at Canal Side. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to see Buffalo alive and well, but it's not so good when you're on the outside looking in. It's not so good when you haven't been treated fairly and you have all this work going on and our people are not being fairly represented. After all, well, you do know that the city of Buffalo is 50% minority. What does that mean? That half of the city of Buffalo uh, is African American, Latino American, Native American, or uh, uh, Asian American. Half of the city, mostly black and Latino. Mostly black and Latino. And when you go to a place like Solar City, you don't see but a handful. At one point, there were only nine African Americans on site. That's unacceptable. And more importantly, the books, the records, the information needs to be open. Let me say this, if Seminelli is doing a project that they own and operate, God bless them. It's nobody's business, perhaps, uh, to require them to show all their records. Uh, you know, you can ask them. But let me say this, when you have a state-funded project, there's not a request, please, can you give me some information? That's my money, and I want to know what you're doing with my money. That doesn't make any sense. And that's why we're not going to accept that. That's why we're doing something about it. That's why we're talking to lawyers, we're talking to the governor's office, and we hold the Empire State Development accountable for this. Through investigative posts and Mr. Jim Heaney, a not-for-profit uh, deep research organization, we found that uh, there were a change of records, a change of, of goals and it wasn't disclosed to the community. You know, you just decided to change, to, to make a change and lower the goals. And that's not right. We hold the governor, Andrew Cuomo, and his staff and Empire State Development responsible for this. So a woman like Lourdes Zabata and some of those who are trying to run the compliance office of the state of New York Empire State Development they're in New York City. Who is here in Buffalo working for Empire State Development? And honestly, I want to say this, friends who are watching this program, we're talking about Solar City and the Seminelli Development Company, which is the construction manager hired and being paid to run this project by the state of New York. So hiring people 
who did work for Seminelli at the Joint School Construction, uh, that's nice that they're preparing reports. That doesn't mean that we hold them accountable. You know who we hold accountable? We hold the Compliance Office of the Empire State Development accountable. And as a result of that, beloved, we have organized a um, series of meetings called the Community Contract Compliance Review Board. This committee meets every single Thursday at the Merriweather Library at 6 o'clock p.m. Now, you know the Merriweather Library is uh, right at the corner of Utica and Jefferson. Every single Thursday, that's not a holiday, we're there at 6 o'clock. I'm going to ask you to come out and see what we're talking about. After all, it's your money, and you have a right to know how your money is being spent. And if you are an individual who has some training, male or female, in the skilled trades, you know something about electrical, plastering, uh, boiler, uh, you know, HVAC, you know something about cement work, you know something about structural steel, you have a background in some aspect of the skilled trades, painting, uh, finishing, or whatever it is, roofing, you should have the opportunity to apply and work for this. And the way this works right now, because it's a project labor agreement, you have to have some kind of union affiliation or uh, the company that you work for has to agree that for every person they have working on this job, uh, one of those, one of the of two have to be a union representative. So we need people in the union, don't we? We need people who are applying to get in the union. Uh, do you, are you a journeyman and you're not working? As uh, Mr. Richard Boone is an example from Local 210, uh, he's got several years in. He's a journeyman, card-carrying union dues member of Local 210. But Mr. Boone doesn't have any work right now. Is that the case with you? I, do you have apprenticeship experience where you've been working one, two, three, four years in a union situation? Uh, you've been uh, getting that $16, $18, or $20 an hour, and you're not working? We've got somewhere you should be working, and that's at Solar City. Are you someone who's gone to school, like at McKinley, and you've learned about the building trades, and you're ready to go to work? Are you 18? Do you have a car? Do you have a driver's license? Can you pass a urine test? Uh, if you're interested, now listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you out my numbers in a little bit. Uh, I, I, want you, I want to hear from you. In fact, I want to see you. Don't just complain about the situation. Uh, to our citizens watching this program, perhaps you uh, have a nephew or a cousin or a young man on your street that you know is interested, a young woman that wants to work, wants to make good money. And we're only talking right now about the building of this $900 million facility. Beyond that, beyond that is much more than, you know, the, the construction because if you can't control the construction of it, how are we going to tell Solar City? How are we going to tell them to hire somebody? And let me tell you about these jobs, constructing those solar panels. It takes about six months of training. It doesn't require a college diploma. It pays 60, 70, 80, 90,000, some of those $45,000 jobs. Do you want one of those kind of jobs? Well, then you need to come see us. That's every Thursday at the Merriweather Library. That's the Community Contract Compliance Review Board. Come on and, and, and uh, come out and let's be part of that. We've got to do something about the disparities in Buffalo. And I don't care how they always have been doing this. I don't really care about how it used to be. We are going to have uh, a fairness. Or either a couple things are going to happen. The community is going to come out there and we're going to stop some work sites or we're going to be suing. All right, I'll be right back in just a little bit with the advocator. This is Charlie Fisher. See you in a moment. Speak on it. Because that's embarrassment to the city when you have a mayor that's going to accept 16 percent. You know, when we have a city of what, 48 percent? Yeah. You know, or, you know uh, of blacks. I mean, that's a shame. I mean, it's a shame. You know, it's a shame that we're in the third poorest city in the country and we have to beg for jobs. But they can come out of other cities. Yeah. You're seeing them work here? Um, well, hello. This is Charlie Fisher. I'm back with the advocator. Uh, and as president of the BUILD organization, uh, I've been involved with uh, 
some other things. We've talked about disparities in the city of Buffalo, and I just want to change up. We were talking about construction. What can we just talk a little bit about our city of Buffalo Police and Fire Department? You know, the city of Buffalo Fire Department has been the center of uh, a lawsuit many years ago. Condi Peoples and some of the early MOCA firefighters, black firefighters, sued because of discriminatory practices in the fire department. And Brother Ted Kirkland and those with the Buffalo Fire Department, Buffalo Police Department, because Buffalo was found guilty of wrongfully discriminating against people who happened to be African American. And Judge John T. Curtin, the, the uh, United States uh, Justice uh, for this Western region, uh, has been ruling on the city of Buffalo. For every time the city of Buffalo hired a uh, white, they had to hire the highest ranking minority on the test. They took a test. So it's called one for one hiring. That's because of the racism, discrimination, and injustice. Well, the city of Buffalo and Mayor Byron Brown, uh, Commissioner Garner Whitfield, uh, asked the uh, J Justice uh, Curtin's court if they could be relieved from doing the one-for-one -one hiring. Honestly, I don't know why in the world a black mayor would want to uh, ask the judge to leave, the, you know, stop the city from hiring one-for-one. -one. What's wrong with that? Buffalo's been so full of racism and discrimination and, and wrongdoing. Why in the world would you ask to be relieved for one-for-one -one hiring? I mean, that's why South, the Buffalo News said, Byron Brown, you're the best mayor South Buffalo had. But frankly, for the east side of Buffalo, you had no business doing that. Aside from that, you know, I do happen to like Byron Brown, and I served as campaign manager uh, for his campaign in 1997 as re-election. Uh, <laughs> we have a long history. So as brothers, we may not agree on everything. We certainly don't agree on that. But well, let me just speak about recently, the city of Buffalo hired 130 cadets. Well, they had to take a test. And of those 130, rather 125, 30 were people of color. One woman and 24 men, minorities. And they went out as cadets. They were, I think, being paid somewhere in the vicinity uh, well, it escapes me right now what the actual amount was, but they were being paid a fairly decent salary, maybe 16 or so dollars an hour, I can't remember. And uh, they were in a training. They were being trained as a uh, firefighter at the Erie County um, Training Center out on Union Road. That's another thing I don't like. Why in the world? what City of Buffalo firefighters have to be trained in Chictawaga. No, you know what, Chictawaga needs to come to Buffalo. Let me just say this about the training. There was hazing going on. Now you gotta go for training for a period of time. There was hazing, people were called monkeys. Uh, these black and brown recruits were called, uh, said all you know about is pimping and, and flipping hamburgers. You know, who, who did that? Training personnel like Jason Zora, who is the, uh, one of the lieutenants there. I'm telling you this because the MOCA firefighters has taken uh, this City of Buffalo Fire Department to court about this. The City of Buffalo, if you're going to hire people like Jason Zora to go about and har harass and haze and, uh, you know, the kind of discriminatory practices, then, you know, you don't deserve to be from under Judge Curtin's hiring. And there needs to be an investigation on what happened during this period of time. Uh, I, I think that, uh, in fact, build organization, we went, really went out there to Chigdawaga. We got to the entrance, and there were several sheriff deputies there, big guys, and they asked what we wanted. Said, we're going to here to talk to the fire training staff. And unfortunately, these sheriff deputies wouldn't let myself and others uh, then. So we had to have prayer, and we did pray right then and there, and we had a protest. We protested the fact that the City of Buffalo Fire Department has been mistreating the cadets.
you know, half of the cadets had been removed from service. Of the, the 30, 15 were removed. Fortunately now, and I want to thank my good friend Byron Brown for his wisdom in ordering a reinstatement or whatever the case, or maybe the commissioner. Uh, but you know who was there when I got out there? Garney Whitfield, the commissioner. And he was there to tell me that he knew of no complaints of discrimination, and that's nonsense. Hogs and Russ Andrews law firm has been hired by the city of Buffalo uh, to represent the, this matter. And uh, an attorney from Washington, D.C. Uh, has been involved in this, Ray Marks. Um, we really have some work to do. But I don't care if it's a, we, and we do have a black mayor and a black uh, council president, my good friend Darius Fridgen, and we have a brown majority leader, and Dave, David Rivera, and we have a, a black uh, chairman of the Civil Service Committee, and we have a black commissioner, a black deputy commissioner, and Mr. Uh, Peterson. Um, but you know what? We don't have any black battalion chiefs or division chiefs. Never had. Only have one or two, uh, three or four captains out of the 40-some captains. Only a couple. So, you know, because of the Judge Curtin ruling, we were able to get the one-for-one -one hirings, and we got a lot of people in. Just one other comment I want to mention to you about the police department. Can you imagine taking the test to be a police officer and uh, you pass the agility, the physicals, you pass the drug test, you, you've been selected, you, you pass the written test, and then they tell you you got to have a psychological exam. And I do appreciate psychological exams when they're fair. But can you imagine going into there and being asked two questions and, and then that's all, folks? No. Mm -mm. So we'll be coming to the Civil Service Committee and Mr. Wyatt to raise these questions and bring some of these uh, people. I want to say to Jason Zohr and those, why don't you get out of the fire department? You have no business being a firefighting training. And I'm going to look into the certification, frankly, because some of you haven't got your proper certification. The national certification standards don't allow for hazing. You need to stop it or we'll be out to see you again. Now. Friends, uh, I just got a few seconds left in the program. You've been listening to Charlie Fisher on The Advocator. I'm your friend and brother. I serve as president not only of Build a Buffalo, Inc. I chair with, along with Betty Jean Grant, but I'm the chair of the Contract Community Review Board. Uh, Build Organization supports that. Also, I'm president of Friends Incorporated, the Dorothy Collier Community Center, and the Trinidad uh, Neighborhood Association. Uh, I'm a trustee at Lincoln Memorial. I'm involved. I didn't just get here. As we close, um, we are going to continue to fight as never before. Remember, freedom is not free. Uh, let's take a stand. Uh, Charlie Fish, you can get me. Call me, 716-650-8889, and we'll be glad to take on these, uh, these matters that are of importance to your community. Continue to watch the Advocator program. Invite the viewers. We invite you to follow them at www.latel. U C I P R O D U C T I O N S dot com. And uh, we'll be back. The advocate will be back. God bless you all, Sister Nikki, and all of you for a great job. Thank you to the Apollo Telecommunications. God bless you. This has been Charlie Fisher, and we'll be back to see you very soon. All right? Thank you. With no senses to aid in the jungle, the game was rigged against me. I don't matter any way they see my mistakes. When I try, oh wait, they ignore me. Okay, I'll do me all day, but it hurts at night though. I'm restless with my iPhone. I'm becoming an eyesore. I'm alone and I know.